Miss Winslow, might I be rude enough to ask you for a little of your excellent whiskey? Yes, of course. Perhaps you'll forgive me not getting up. The heat in that courtroom really was so infernal. Are you all right, Sir Robert? Just a slight nervous reaction, that's all. Besides, I've not been feeling myself all day. I told the judge so this morning, but uh, I don't think that he believed me. He thought it was a trick. What suspicious minds people have, have they not? Yes. Thank you. Sir Robert, I have a confession and an apology to make. Oh, my dear young lady, I'm sure the one is rash and the other is superfluous. I'd far rather hear neither. No, I'm afraid you must. This is probably the last time I shall see you, and it is better penance for me to say this than to write it. I have entirely misjudged your attitude to this case. And if in doing so, I have either appeared rude or ungrateful, I am most humbly sorry. My dear Miss Winslow, you have never seemed to me either rude or ungrateful. And my attitude to the case has been the same as yours, a determination to win at all costs. But when you speak of gratitude, you must remember that those costs were not mine, but yours. Weren't they your costs also, Sir Robert? I beg your pardon? Haven't you, too, made a very special sacrifice for this case? The robes of that office would not have suited me. Wouldn't they? And furthermore, I have every intention of reporting Curry to the Law Society. No, no, please don't. He did me a very great service by telling me. Well, you must give me your word to never reveal it to a living soul. And even to forget it yourself. I will never reveal it to another soul, but I cannot promise to forget it myself. Very well. If you choose to endow an unimportant incident with a romantic significance, you are entirely at liberty to do so. I must go now. Why are you always at such pains to prevent people knowing the truth about you, Sir Robert? Am I indeed? You know you are. Why? Perhaps because I do not know the truth about myself. That's no answer. Are you cross-examining me, Miss Winslow? On this point, yes. Why are you so ashamed of your emotions? Because as a lawyer, I must necessarily distrust them. Why? To fight a case on emotional grounds is the shortest way of losing it. Emotions muddy the issue. Cold, clear logic and buckets of it should be a lawyer's only equipment. And was it cold, clear logic that made you weep today at the verdict? Your maid, I suppose, told you that. Very well. If you must have it, here it is. I wept today because right had been done. Not justice? No, not justice. Right. It's not very hard to do justice. Very hard to do right. Unfortunately, while the appeal of justice is intellectual, for some very odd reason, the appeal of right induces tears in court. That is my answer and my excuse. And now may I please leave the witness box? Uh, no. One last question. How can you reconcile your support for Winslow against the Crown with your political beliefs? Very easily. No one party has a monopoly of concern for individual liberty. On that issue, all parties are united. I don't think so. You don't? No, not all parties. Some people in all parties. That is a very wise remark. And let us hope that those some people will always prove enough people. You'd have made a very good advocate. Would I? 
Why do you not canalize your feministic impulses towards the law courts, Miss Winslow, and abandon the lost cause of woman suffrage? Because I don't believe it is a lost cause. No? You intend to continue to pursue it? Certainly. You'll be wasting your time. I don't think so. Pity. In the House of Commons in the days to come, I shall make a point of looking up at the gallery in the hope of catching a glimpse of you in that provocative hat. Well, goodbye, Miss Winslow. Shall I see you one day in the House of Commons, then? One day, perhaps. But not in the gallery. Across the floor. Perhaps. Goodbye. <laughs>